There are a bunch of videos on YouTube that will show you how to build a jumping robot like this one. This video is a little different. Not only will I show you how to build the robot, but I'll talk about the physics behind how it works and explain how you can change or improve the design for your own engineering project. I'll show all the materials you need as we go through the video, but if you'd like to see the complete list all at once, check out the link in the video description. Let's start by talking about how the robot works. The motor is attached to two straws, one on each side. These straws allow the motor to slide up and down on these wooden dowels. A rubber band hooked around the front and back of the motor and up over this wooden dowel going across at the top pulls the motor back up. So if I press it down and let go, you can see that the rubber band will quickly pull the motor back up, launching the robot into the air. Of course, we want the robot to jump automatically, which is why we have these bottle caps attached to the motor as wheels. If you look closely at the bottle caps, you will see that around about one half of the edge of each bottle cap, I have a strip of hot glue. Now, the smooth plastic surface of the bottle cap will just slip against the wooden dowels, but this hot glue has much more friction. So as this wheel spins, when the hot glue comes in contact with the wooden dowel, it is going to pull the motor down and stretch the rubber band as the wheel continues to spin. Then, once it reaches the end of the hot glue, the smooth plastic comes back into contact with the dowel again, and the motor can go back up. So as this repeats, each time the motor will pull itself down using that higher friction hot glue, keep spinning, slip back up, the robot will jump, and the cycle will repeat. You can see this in action if we watch some slow motion videos of the robot. Again, watch the bottle cap closely and you'll see that as it spins, the segment of hot glue pulls the motor down along the dowel, and then the smooth plastic part allows the motor to slip, so the rubber band contracts, pulling the motor up and causing the robot to jump. The timing isn't always perfect. For example, sometimes the robot might try to jump again while it's still in the air, or it might bounce when it hits the ground and mess up the next jump. These are things you can try to improve as part of an engineering project. Now, let's get into building the robot. Let's start by preparing the bottle caps to fit onto the motor shafts. You'll want to get an adult to help you drill small holes directly in the center of each bottle cap. The holes should be slightly smaller than the diameter of the motor shaft, which you can see here is not perfectly circular. So you'll want to start out with a hole that's roughly the thinner dimension here. That way you can press fit the bottle cap onto the shaft. You want this to be a very tight fit so that the bottle cap does not just spin freely on the shaft. You want the shaft to spin with the bottle cap. But we don't want to rely just on friction to hold it in place. We're also going to apply plenty of hot glue to hold the bottle caps onto the motor shaft. It's better to start small and then make the hole slightly bigger if you need to, because you can't get it onto the shaft, than to start too big. If you make the hole too big and the bottle cap is just loose, then you'll need to start over with a new bottle cap. Once you have both bottle caps pressed on, you will want to make sure that there is a small gap between each bottle cap and the sides of the motor. You don't want them pressed all the way up against the motor. And then you are going to apply a liberal amount of hot glue inside the bottle cap and around the shaft. You want to be careful when you're doing this that you don't get any hot glue between the bottle cap and the motor itself because you don't want the bottle cap to get stuck to the motor. You only want it glued to the shaft so it spins along with the shaft. But again, you want to make sure you don't get any glue on the other side there, that's going to stick the bottle cap to the motor and prevent the shaft from spinning. So apply plenty of glue, you can always add more later if you need it, and then make sure you wait for that glue to cool down and solidify before you try spinning the bottle caps because you don't want to accidentally rotate them and pull them off the shaft such that they spin freely. You can set that aside for the glue to cool for now and we'll switch to building the base of the robot. To build the base of the robot, and I have the completed robot here for reference, you'll need one popsicle stick cut in half, and then a smaller segment of another popsicle stick that's a few centimeters long. And this is going to form the two legs or feet of the robot that are connected by this piece in the back, and then later we will mount the rest of the structure to that base here. Now, since this is an engineering design project, there are no exact dimensions that are right or wrong to build this base. I am using the jumbo or wider popsicle sticks here, not the narrower kind but you don't have to use the exact dimensions I have here. You could make them longer or shorter, you could try different designs to see if that makes a difference, but for now, if you want to follow the build in this video, you just set them slightly apart like this. I'm going to apply dabs of hot glue to the back of each foot, 
then I'm going to press the other piece on top of them, make sure it's down firmly, and then again, let that glue dry. Now let's switch back to working with the motor since the glue on the bottle caps should be dry. Next, you will need a wooden dowel and a drinking straw. You'll want to cut two pieces from the straw that are a few centimeters long, and it's very important to make sure that the dowel fits inside the drinking straw and that the straw can slide smoothly back and forth without getting stuck. I have a 3 16th inch diameter wooden dowel here and a standard size drinking straw, and you can see they work pretty well. But again, this is an engineering design project. You can try different dimensions. You are going to want four pieces from the dowel. Two of them about 10 to 12 centimeters long, and two of them about four to five centimeters long. Again, you can try changing those dimensions. For cutting the dowel, you can use the tools you have available with adult supervision. For example, scissors probably aren't going to work very well, but you can have something like diagonal cutters here, or you could use a small saw or rotary tool. Just be careful when cutting through because the dowel might sort of launch off like that. So make sure you have it pointed away from you. You can also use something sharp to score around the edges of the dowel. So instead of trying to cut the whole way through, I make some tiny cuts the whole way around the edge here, and then you can bend it back and forth to break it off cleanly like that. So however you want to cut it with whatever tools you have available is fine, but you're going to need there's four pieces when you're done. Again, two of them longer, which you can see if I pull the completed robot over here again, those two long pieces are going to be the ones for the motor to slide up and down, and then the two shorter pieces are going to be horizontal supports at the top and the bottom. Now is probably the trickiest and most important part of the entire assembly. You need to glue these straws onto the sides of the motor such that the dowel is in contact with the bottle cap on each side. And this is very important because remember, as this bottle cap spins, there's going to be a grippy surface on it, either a bead of hot glue or something like rubber band, that is going to grab on to the dowel and pull the motor down so the robot can jump. So if there is too much of a gap here, then it's never going to make contact and it's not going to move. So you really want this right up against the bottle cap because there is a little wiggle. You see the, bottle, the dowel was not exactly the same diameter as the straw. So that will give it a little room when the glue or the rubber band comes in contact to pull itself down. If it's too tight and there's really a lot of friction, even when it's just the bottle cap, then it might actually jam when you get to the rubber band or glue part. So you want it touching, but not pressed up against it super tight. So I find that the easiest way to do this is get everything lined up with the straw and the dowel where you think you want them. Then I'm going to apply plenty of glue right underneath where I'm going to have the straw. Again, be careful not to get the glue too close to the bottle cap because you don't want the bottle cap to get stuck. Quickly place the straw on there and then hold it in place until that glue has dried and then you can apply more glue as needed to hold the straw in place. Now, again, there's no right or wrong answer for the exact angle of the straw here. You see I could rotate it all the way down here. I could put it up like this as long as the dowel is still in contact with the wheel. So there's no right or wrong answer there. I'm gonna go for about right here apply plenty of glue right beneath where I'm going to put the straw and always come back and add more later to hold it down quickly get my straw in place and now I'm going to double check look at it from the top make sure that the straw is in contact with the dowel and now I am going to very carefully hold this in place look at it from the side make sure the straw is parallel to the side of the motor you don't want it tilted in or out nice and parallel so again you have to sit here carefully until the glue starts to solidify enough because if you let go it might start to tilt as the glue is still very liquidy and then we're going to let this glue dry add some more to make sure that straw is stable and then do the same thing on the other side so you can see here i've attached those straws on both sides it's very important to make sure the straws are parallel you don't want these crooked or the motor won't be able to slide up and down and again that the dowel on each side is in contact with the bottle cap the next thing we are going to do, again, I have the completed robot here for reference, is build a frame to attach these two parallel dowels to the base and connect them at the top. So you can decide what order you want to do this in. You could attach them at the bottom first. You could connect them at the top first. I am going to apply two dabs of glue to the tops of these dowels and then take one of my other shorter dowel pieces as a little crossbar here press that on 
And I want to make sure that the dowels stay parallel when I do this. So I don't want to accidentally push those out too far or push them in too far. I don't want to have them offset like that. They got to be nice and parallel and lined up as I let that glue dry. If you mess this step up, when I'm done, I'm going to test to make sure that the motor can still slide up and down. Don't panic. You can always pry off or cut off or heat it up so the glue melts up here and try re-gluing that piece. But again, you want to make sure that the dowels remain parallel so the motor can slide up and down. Once that glue is dried, again, you want to make sure that the dowels can slide up and down easily here. If they aren't parallel and everything is crooked, then they might get stuck. It is critical to the operation of the robot that the motor be able to slide smoothly like this. So you can see now I have glued my other short piece to the base, and that is going to serve as a bit of a support for the longer pieces to lean against to hold this at an angle. Now you might ask, what angle? And again, this is an engineering project. There isn't really a right answer there. You can probably say that, well, you don't want it to be straight up unless you only want your robot to jump straight up. If you want your robot to jump up and forward, then it needs to be angled forward slightly. But if you go too far, the robot might become kind of too front heavy and tip over. So maybe you would need some longer legs to support it. So I'm going to go with just kind of eyeballing it, just like I built my other robot here for reference. Maybe a little steeper than a 45 degree angle, something like a 60 degree angle. So I'm going to apply plenty of glue where those two dowels are going to connect at the bottom. And hold this in place. Make sure I'm not pinching the dowels. I want to keep them parallel. I'm going to hold this in place while that glue dries, and then I'm going to apply some more glue as extra support at the base. Once that glue at the base has dried, again, you want to double check and make sure your motor can slide up and down without getting stuck. So if you pull it to the top and let go, it should just fall back down and you're okay. If it gets stuck, unfortunately, you are going to need to try and redo the dowels. So again, you can peel them off and break them off if necessary and redo the glue, or maybe use something like a hairdryer to heat the glue up so it gets more liquidy and you have some room to adjust things without taking them apart. But it's very important that the motor be able to slide up and down smoothly like this. The next thing you're going to do is connect a rubber band to pull the motor up. So you can do that by hooking it over the front and the back of the motor. But again, there's no exact right, and way, right or wrong way to do this. You could glue it to the motor. You could cut the rubber band and just use a single strip that's attached or glued or tied on both points, or you could use the whole rubber band like this. The way I'm going to do it in this video is put a small piece of a toothpick through this hole on the front of the motor. It helps to glue that in place so it doesn't wobble. And then I'm going to hook a rubber band around the back end of the motor after putting the wires through it first so it's not pinching the wires. If I can get it here, there we go. Putting those wires through the rubber band. I'm going to pull the rubber band up over the top here. Make sure the rubber band is hooked over the back of the motor, not just the wires. So you want to go down over that back part, up over the top of the motor, and then around that toothpick. And again, I'm going to glue that toothpick in place so it doesn't fall out. But you can see how that serves as a hook to hold the motor in place. So now, when I push the motor down, the rubber band pulls it back up. You might want to experiment with different rubber bands of different thicknesses and lengths to figure out what works best here. You don't want it to be too tight. If it's so short and tight that the motor can't pull itself down at all, then your robot isn't really going to work. But if it's too long and too loose and doesn't pull the motor back up at all, then it's not going to work either. So again, you'll want to experiment, and you can just do this part by hand with finding the right rubber band such that when you push the motor down and release, the robot jumps forward. Now you're almost done. We just have a few more things to do. Next, we are going to apply that high friction surface to the bottle caps, and there are different ways you can do this. I am going to apply a bead of hot glue, but I have seen other videos where people glue a strip of a rubber band on. You can try either one and see what works best with the combination of materials you have. But ultimately, you want a higher friction surface around roughly one half of the perimeter of each bottle cap. And those two strips need to be lined up with each other. So you don't want them on opposite sides of the bottle cap because you need this to spin and you need each side to pull the motor down along the dowel at the same time. So I am going to lay the robot on its back like this grab a marker so I know exactly where I want to start and stop and I'm going to make sure I line up my start and stop points so they're across from each other. And I'm going to go a little less than halfway right now. I can always add more if I need it later or if you add too much you can peel it off the bottle cap. And then I'm going to get my hot glue gun and I'm going to apply a pretty thick 
strip of glue because you really need it to grip onto that wooden dowel. So I'm going to go try and smoothly try to make it the same thickness the whole way across. That's maybe one of the advantages of using a rubber band is it's the same thickness so you don't have to worry about bumps or dips in it. I'm going to apply the glue to both of these up to those marks. Careful not to burn your fingers. Again, try to make sure it's thick enough. You see I got a little thinner in one part there because I was going too fast. But you can always peel this off the plastic or add more glue later if it doesn't work. And now here you definitely need to make sure that glue tries complete, dries completely before you try this. You don't want it to touch the dowels while it's still wet and accidentally glue to the dowels. So I'm just going to wait for that to dry and then we'll go on to the next step. Once that glue has dried, you will want to test this by hand. So just spin the bottle caps by hand, and you should see that the smooth plastic part just slips against the dowels, but the glue should grip the dowels and start to stretch the rubber band. And again, you might have to play with this here, maybe try a different rubber band or make the glue layer thicker or thinner in case it's just slipping like that, then it's not really going to work. But what we really want to test is see how it works when we connect batteries and the motor spins automatically, not when we're spinning it by hand. So for batteries, you're going to want lithium batteries. They are these small batteries that you commonly see on things like toy drones because they are very, very lightweight for the amount of power they can supply. So they're not as bulky and heavy as things like AA batteries or 9 volt batteries. And the simplest circuit you can make here is just taking the pins of your motor wires and plugging them directly into the female connector on the end of the battery. That's not really the proper way to do this, but we're just kind of going to do a quick workaround for now and then talk about some better ways you can make these circuit later. So I'm going to take the black wire from the battery, or sorry, the black wire from the motor, plug it into the black wire of the battery, and the red wire from the motor and plug it into the red wire from the battery. And you see, my robot actually starts kind of hopping around along a little bit there. I'm going to disconnect so you can hear me. It's not jumping very much, but it, the motors were spinning, it was working, and it was moving forward. If your wheels were spinning the wrong direction, so if, it, if they were going like this and pulling the motor up, then you just need to reverse the red and black wires that will make current flow in the other direction through the motor and make it spin the other way. So obviously you don't want to be holding the battery when the robot is moving. You want the battery to be attached to the robot. So again, this is one of the things you can experiment with, especially in terms of the physics of how the robot works. You can see what happens if you put this battery, because it's going to add mass if you put it in different locations. So you could put it down here on the base so it doesn't move with the motor. You could attach it to the motor somewhere as long as it doesn't interfere with the operation of the rubber band or the bottle caps. I like to just take a piece of double-sided tape, and you've got a lot of space on the bottom of the motor here, and you can stick it to the bottom of the motor. Now, Lithium batteries can get damaged if they get hot, so I don't recommend using hot glue for them. And double-sided tape is probably going to be better. And you are going to want to make sure when you put it on there, again, that it doesn't interfere with the wheels. So make sure when the hot glue spins around that it doesn't hit the corner of the motor. And you want a small enough battery that it can fit in between the straws and dowels here. If it's too wide, depending on how you mount it, it might not fit in that space. So again, engineering design project. There's no right or wrong place to put the motor. I'm going to put mine right there with some tape. Now that my battery is taped to the motor, I'm going to reconnect the wires and see if my robot moves on its own. Plug that in there. We'll see it start spinning. What you can see there is that my robot was moving forward, but it wasn't moving very much. And it looked like, again, this glue wasn't really gripping the dowels as much as I would like it to. It was kind of slipping along the dowel and it was stretching the rubber band a little bit, but it wasn't stretching it all the way down to the bottom and giving it that nice really big jump like we saw with the other robot I had built earlier. So this is where you might need to iterate and play with your design to see if you can get it to work better. So I could, for example, maybe make these strips of hot glue a little wider or a little thicker and see if that helps them grip the dowel better. You could also experience the opposite problem where maybe your motor gets stuck. So it might get jammed here if your glue layer is too thick or maybe your rubber band is too strong and it can't pull itself down at all. So there are mechanical things you can adjust, like maybe trying to shave off some of the glue layer to make it thinner or using a slightly weaker rubber band. But there's also something electrical you can change. You can connect two batteries in series like this. That's going to give your motor more voltage and more torque, or it's going to be stronger as it spins. You can do that by taking a jumper wire and connecting the positive end 
of one battery or the red wire to the negative end or black wire of the next battery. You're then going to connect your motor to these two outer wires. I'll connect the black wire from the motor here to the red, sorry, the black wire from the motor to the black wire of the battery here and the red wire from the motor to the red wire of this battery. So you can see, just if I do that here, you can probably even hear how the motor is spinning faster. And again, then you would have to think about how you're going to mount these two batteries on the robot. So let's see what happens if I try that. So you can see that did make my motor spin a lot faster, but my robot was still just corner, sort of stutter stepping forward. It really wasn't pulling itself down far enough along the dowel. So I'm gonna try adjusting my glue strips here and then we'll see how it goes. After some adjustments, I have connected two batteries and I've added some more glue to the bottle caps and let's see how we do now. But before we do that, I wanna talk a little bit more about how you can make changes to the circuit. So what I'm doing now is just plugging the wires directly into the batteries to turn the motor on. And that can be a little annoying because then you have to unplug the wire to turn the motor off and all that plugging and unplugging can start to fatigue and break these wires eventually. So it can be more convenient to turn your robot on and off if you add a switch. You can get a rocker switch like this that simply allows you to turn something on and off. This would require soldering to these two tabs on the back of the switch. And you could also use a very tiny breadboard like this with a slide switch that fits into the breadboard that would let you switch the robot on and off. So I'm not going to explain exactly how to do that in this video, I just wanted to mention it. If you check out the links in the video description, we do have a soldering tutorial and a breadboard tutorial on our site. You can also go to the written instructions for this project, which show a circuit diagram and where you would insert the switch. So again, I'm not going to cover that right now, but if you don't want to have to plug this wire in and then unplug it to turn the robot off, those are some options. So I'm not going to do that for now. Let's just plug this in and see how we do. So what you saw there, the robot is definitely jumping farther now, but like I mentioned earlier, maybe its weight is leaning a little too far forward. It tended to get through just kind of one jump and then face plant. So that is something I could continue to iterate on and improve. I could give it some longer feet to prevent it from falling forward like that, or I could heat up this glue and try standing it up a little more. But I'm not going to give away all of the engineering in this video. This is the point where you are going to need to experiment with your robot, because they're all going to turn out differently, and see if you can improve its jumping. Since the robot moves pretty fast, it can be hard to see what's going on. This is where taking some slow motion video of the robot really helps, so you can analyze its motion. Most modern smartphones can take slow motion video, so if you have one available, use it to film your robot. Finally, have some fun and decorate your robot. You might want to add googly eyes, or you can even make it look like a jumping animal, like a rabbit or a frog. Remember that you can find complete instructions to build this robot, including a materials list, in the description of this video. You can also find a library of over 1,200 science projects on our website, including robotics projects and all other areas of science. To find one, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.